Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Data Diversity. We'd like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Data Diversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Feiner. Today, Bob will discuss how generative AI and LLM shape data governance. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just a note, Zoom defaults to chat to send to just the panelists, but we may absolutely change that to network with everyone. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section. And to find the chat in the Q&A panels, you can click those icons in the bottom middle of your screen to activate those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Seiner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, let me turn the floor over to Bob to get his presentation started. Hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. Hi, everybody. Um, Shannon, it's still saying that the screen sharing is disabled on my side. Well, let me fix that. You didn't really want to give a presentation, did you? <laughs> okay, okay, there we go. For a few years. I, can't re I, can't remember that, I can't remember us ever having this happen before, but okay. Um, yes, I did want to give a presentation today, and I'm looking forward to it, as I hope most of you are as well. Let me bring up the slides. All right, so again, thank you, Shannon, for the introduction. Thank you, everybody, for taking time out of your busy schedules to sit through another uh, another um, another in instance or another um, episode of the Real World Data Governance Series. I've been, I've circled this topic on the calendar at the beginning of the year because I thought that, number one, it would probably take me the most time to put together a good webinar around this subject. It would give me an opportunity to also learn things about generative AI and LLMs, especially in terms of how they will help to shape data governance programs. And you know, it's pretty amazing. I just wanted to spend a minute before we get started into the session today. It's, a, it's amazing to think that it was less than 18 months ago. It was November 30th of 2022 that the idea of ChatGPT was unveiled, unveiled upon the public. And I had a client talk to me about large language models and how they were going to um, revolutionize everything, including data governance. And so I've been, uh, like I said, it's only been basically 18 months. Um, so a lot of these, uh, the topics like the generative AI and LLMs, they're a little bit futuristic because they're ideas that organizations are thinking about embracing. We don't have any problem here at Dataversity and in our webinar series addressing topics that are kind of leading edge. And even though generative AI and LLMs are topics of every conversation, it seems, they're still leading edge in terms of data governance. We've done presentations on data mesh and data fabric, and there's still a lot of organizations accepting those. Even believe it or not, years ago, I gave a presentation on the Internet of Things and its impact and the data from the Internet of Things and the impact it would have on data governance. In fact, it came full, sort, full circle when I wrote an article in LinkedIn the other day, talked about what comes after AI for data professionals. The Internet of Things was something that's big. So we're going to address the topic of AI, generative AI, LLMs, and how it shapes data governance but I had mentioned to Shannon before the before this webinar that perhaps we should have named this how generative AI and LLMs can shape data governance or should shape data governance or will shape data governance. Because a lot of these things, organizations aren't starting to do them yet, or at least they're starting to think of them when they're building out their AI strategies within the organizations. So again, I'm really happy to have this topic. It gave me an opportunity to do a little bit of reading into well, what does the future hold for the use of generative AI and LLMs um, to shape the field of data governance. So real quickly, before we get started, just to spend a moment here talking about some of the things that I'm involved in. As you know, obviously, we have to do the monthly webinar series on the third Thursday of the month. Next month, we're going to be talking about the quality about quality as a rhythm of data governance. And you can register at all those different sites that I've listed there. 
one piece of big news is that in a couple of weeks, I'll be in San Diego at the DGIQ West Conference, Data Governance and Information Quality Conference. I'll be doing a three-hour workshop on frameworks, on models and best practices. And then I'll also be doing a keynote on navigating data governance in 2024. Um, I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance, so just want to share with you again quickly. I've written a couple of books on the subject that are available through your favorite bookseller. I've also provided some non-invasive data governance and other learning plans through Dataversity, through their training center. So I expect uh, I uh, would love it if you would go and take a look at what's available through the Dataversity Training Center. The name of my consulting business is KIK Consulting and Educational Services. Um, KIK stands for Knowledge is King. And last but not least, I also am an adjunct faculty member in, at Carnegie Mellon University here in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Just recently, they changed the name of their program from a Chief Data Officer Certificate Program to the Chief Data and AI Officer Program. So I don't know if you know this or not, but Carnegie Mellon was at the very earliest stages, was involved in the various, very earliest stages of robotics and artificial intelligence. So it seems to be that even with their chief data officer program and that program evolving into the chief data and AI officer program, all of these topics, including the one that we're talking about today, are extremely relevant for everybody that's in the data field or literally in any field that you can consider. So what are we gonna talk about in today's webinar? I wanna to touch on these five subjects. I think they kind of gave me a good opportunity to read into what some of the opportunities are for generative AI and LLM when we're implementing data governance programs. So the first thing I wanna talk about is, well, what are some of the potential uses of generative AI and large language models as they help to shape data governance practices within organizations? I wanna then spend a couple minutes talking about how the technologies that are associated with these, uh, with these, which are technologies in themselves, how they can automate data classification, documentation, policy, enforcement, and those types of things. Since I talk a lot about my data governance framework, I wanna talk about strategies for integrating generative AI and LLMs into your data governance framework. And I wanna share some ideas around that. We'll talk about the challenges and the considerations for implementing AI-driven data governance solutions. And then if we have time, and I expect that we should have at least a short amount of time, I wanna run through a couple case studies with you that kind of show that showcase the impact of using these technologies and the impact that they've had on data governance programs. So as I like to do as we get started with these webinars, I want to initially just run through a series of definitions. Um, these definitions haven't changed over the years with me recently. I've, I've made them briefer or shorter, if anything at all, but I, I define data governance as the execution and enforcement of authority over data. I know that's worded strongly, but the truth is at the end of the day, if your data governance program is going to be successful in your organization, its focus is gonna be on people's behavior and getting them to execute and enforce authority over the data, how they define, produce, and use data as part of their daily jobs. My definition of stewardship is that, well, first of all, I say that everybody in the organization is a data steward. If they have a relationship to the data that they are being held formally accountable for, so if a person defines, produces, or uses data as part of their job, and that's virtually everybody in the organization, and they're also being held formally accountable for that relationship to the data, they're a steward. They don't really have an opportunity to opt in or opt out. I've been known to say, everybody is a data steward, get over it. Well, the fact is to cover the entire organization, everybody needs to be, everybody that has a relationship to the data needs to be held accountable for that relationship to the data. And I also want to throw in a definition of data management in general, and it pretty much encapsulates everything, uh, everything data governance, everything data stewardship, at least from a people perspective. That's what data governance and data stewardship focuses on. Okay, so a couple more definitions for you as we get into the meat of the presentation. Everybody's talking about artificial intelligence. Everybody's talking about generative AI, large language models. I figured that 
using that as the progression going from AI to generative AI and then to large language models, that would be the most appropriate way to address the definitions of the, these three terms. So the most general definition that I've seen for artificial in general, uh, artificial intelligence in general, is it is the development of computer systems that are capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. So I'll read that again. It's, it's the development of computer systems capable of performing tasks that require human intelligence. And so just to keep in mind, what, what does this really mean? These tasks can include everything from natural language processing to recognizing patterns in things, most likely data, to solving problems. Most importantly, learning from experience. That's where the artificial intelligence really starts to, if I could say, replicate human intelligence. If it can get to the point where it can replicate the human intelligence and it can learn from its experience and help you to make improved decisions. AI technologies enable machines to simulate these human-like cognitive functions. It encompasses a whole bunch of subfields. And I want to talk to you about you know, specifically the subfield of generative AI and large language models and how they relate back to data, to, to artificial intelligence. But artificial intelligence is kind of the blanket term that's used to represent the development of systems that are capable of doing things that typically used to require human intelligence. So let's take that definition of artificial intelligence and let's build on it a little bit and let's talk about what generative AI is. And so I'm sure you're all familiar with the term generative AI. Well, this is basically a subset of the, the techniques and the models that are used within artificial intelligence, but their basic intent is to generate new content. That's why I bolded those words. That, that new content can be texts, it can be emails, it can be images, audio, video, I could write a song, I could write a book. Um, there's a lot of, of great content that can be generated, but really the focus on generative AI is that it's generating new, new content based on examples, based on data that it's been trained on. So unlike you know, the traditional idea of AI, which really focuses on task-specific, predefined roles to do certain certain tasks. Um, the generative AI models employ things that you may have heard of, including neural networks, deep learning, pro probabilistic, probabilistic modeling to help to understand the relationships between things in the data. It helps you to generate content using information that you've fed into your large language model. So it basically uses those neural networks and the deep learning to help you to provide that content. If you've ever used something like ChatGPT and you ask it a question or you write, ask it to rewrite something that you've written, you're seeing it's using information from other places to generate new content for you. And then what are large language models? Um, again, a large language model is now a type of model used within artificial intelligence that basically is created to help to generate human-like responses, human-like text from input that it receives. Again, if you've used something like ChatGPT or BARD, you know that you can ask it a question or you could ask it to perform a task. And it's gonna generate human-like text for the most part on the input that it's received on the basis of the data that exists within the large language model. So these models are, like I said, said before, they're trained on vast amounts of data. They can be used for various natural pro uh, language processing. It's, it basically refers to the, the large and large language model, refers to the extensive size of the models and the data that is contained within, often characterized by millions or even billions of parameters, parameters that allow it to perform the tasks that you're asking it to perform. So these are pretty general ideas, general concepts around what artificial intelligence is in general, what generative AI is, and what large language models are. Again, my experience has been more as a user than in seeing organizations that have actively started to apply these to how they're governing data within the organization. But let's think about it from the perspective of 
you know, what are some of the things that people within our organization could do with generative AI and could do with large language models? What are some of the tasks that these people, the stewards, the domain stewards, or the, the owners of the data, I hate to use that term, but the owners of the data, even council members, partners of data governance, you name the role within your organization. If we can identify some of the things that we can leverage generative AI and large language models to produce for us, we'll be now taking advantage, we'll be now leading edge in, in using these tools to help us to answer questions and help us to formulate better answers to questions than we might have done just using our own intelligence. But there's a couple questions that we need to ask as well. Because if we're going to use LLMs to do some of the tasks that I'm going to talk about in this webinar, we need to consider what data needs to be included in the LLMs in order to enable this to happen within the organization. Some organizations don't have large language models set up, it's probably most organizations don't. But even to utilize some of the existing LLMs that are available on the market and to ingest information in order to, to produce some of these tasks, to, to um, complete some of these tasks that might be requested by these people that are listed on the left-hand side of the organization. And these are, are the typical roles that are uh, that are required for a data governance program, or at least some of them. And then the next question is, what effort is required to enable this type of functionality within your organization? Again, what I'm hoping to accomplish in this webinar is just to plant the seed of ideas for you as to what can generative AI do for you? What can large language models do for your organization in terms of how it will shape data governance for your organization moving forward? So the first of the five topics that I talked about was, well, what are the some of the potential things that generative AI and LLMs can do in shaping your data governance practices? And here's just a list of five, and the list could have gone longer than this. In fact, I think this kind of overlaps with some of the other sections within the webinar. But things that it can do, like streamline the creation of policies, or perform monitoring or adaptive monitoring uh, for compliance in the data that you have in your systems, or enhance data quality, or customize the roles that you include as the backbone of your data governance program. And certainly the, the last topic, which is on everybody's mind as well, is how can we use these tools to help to improve privacy and security and be innovative in how we're protecting privacy and how we're making certain that our data is secure. So let's go through each of these. So streamlining policy creation. I have, actually, I have actually worked with organizations that have fed their large language models their policies and asked their large language models to produce policies in the same format as their existing policies and feeding it the information that they need that will need to be included within the policy. So you can utilize generative AI for the de development of dynamic data governance policies, but also your frameworks. So I talk a lot about my data governance framework and the core components of the framework are the data, the roles, the processes, the communications, the metrics, and the tools. If we could feed that information into a large language model and use those to generate policy, generate role descriptions, it's gonna help us to speed up the process in defining some of these things for our organization. So streamlining policy means making the, the process of creating the rules and the guidelines more efficient. And you'll notice in the second line of each of these next few slides, the keywords of advanced computer programs. These things aren't gonna happen on their own. We're gonna to need to utilize the tools that are available to us to integrate generative AI and large language models into the activities of the data governance program. Adaptive compliance and monitoring. You know, organizations are already talking about using large language models to help them to comply to the tracking and to uh, even to the interpretation of regulatory controls on the organization. So again, the potential of generative AI and LLMs to shape data governance practices one certainly would be to use it 
to monitor what we are doing, monitor the data in the organization to assure that we're being compliant and that we're following the regulatory concerns of the organization. So this basically means following a flexible approach, having something in an automated fashion, keeping an eye on whether the rules that you've defined for your data, whether they're being followed or not. So employing LLMs for continuous compliance tracking, regulatory interpretation, again, another potential for generative AI within your organization is to use it to monitor your systems for compliance. And another aspect of that too, and I'll talk about it in a minute, is as these regulations change, as your systems change, how do we, how can we stay on top of what's changing in the world? What new regulatory controls are in place? For many large organizations, they're not only worried about the, the um, these controls that are coming from within the US, they're global organizations. So they need to track the changes to the rules, to the regulatory concerns globally, rather than just here within the US. So another potential of generative AI and LLMs is for data quality enhancement. So leveraging generative, a generative AI for protecting data quality checks, or for, for proactive data quality checks and anomaly detection. You know, again, using these large language models, using these models that are generating content to help you to proactively check your data for whether or not it's accurate, just to highlight those discrepancies or things that fall outside the range of quote unquote normal within your organization. So again, another potential of, of these tools in shaping governance is around data quality enhancement. And in fact, I'd encourage any of you, if you're doing some of these things in your organization, use the chat area, you know, reach out to your, your colleagues in your, um, your other participants in the webinar and ask them, how are they, are they using some of these tools right now to help to generate uh, more effective data governance programs within their organizations? You can apply LLMs to define and involve your stewardship according to the needs of your organization. You know, ways to do that is tailoring your roles and responsibilities, you know, related to managing the data that the organization needs, basically. So applying the LLMs to evolve stewardship and organizational needs. And I'll talk in a minute about some of the ways that organizations are thinking of doing that. If you start to flush out your framework, and I'll share my example of a framework here in a couple of minutes, but if you start to flush out that information, that information now becomes data that can be fed into your LLMs that you can use to generate content within your organization. I know that it can happen because I've done things like that. I've I've fed certain things into a large language model and asked specific questions against that data that has now been incorporated or ingested into that large language model. And like I said, privacy and security concerns are everywhere and every organization needs to be thinking about these things. So again, as we're looking for the potential of generative AI and LLMs, um, we need to be thinking about integrating generative AI into our practices associated with data privacy and securing sensitive data within the organization. Some additional thoughts on that are, uh, we just need to use whatever tools are available to us to, to assure that the, the sensitive data is being secured and only getting into the hands of the appropriate people, the people that should have, uh, should have access to that data. All right, so let's spend a couple of minutes talking about how these different technologies can automate things within your organization. So again, we've got these tools that are available to us. Some organizations haven't implemented their own LLMs, but there are generally available LLMs that may help you with some of these tasks even. So let's talk about how we can use those technologies to automate things like data classification, documentation. I wanna share some examples with you of organizations that have done these things. So the first one on the list is AI-driven data classification. And I can share with you that at, at some point, organizations will be moving away from the manual task of, uh, of, of classifying their data and using more prescriptive, more um, algorithmic methods of classifying their data. 
in one organization, a health sciences organization that I worked with recently, that one of the things that they wanted to do was they wanted to do a data asset inventory. And they wanted to make certain they classified the data within each of those data assets appropriately. So they had a set of rules that went against the data that they knew against each of those, uh, those data sets. And they came up with a proposed data classification. If that had been done manually for the 2000 or 2200 data sets that they had, it would have been a long, pretty tedious task. Again, they used AI, they used an algorithm from the data that they had to determine the appropriate classifications for that data. Of course, again, that only gets you so far in that organization, they had peer reviews and, and levels of review to make certain that the appropriate classifications were applied to those data sets. However, they, they started out with something to propose to the organization that on, um, based on a set of rules that were provided to the organization. So technologies can be used to automate data classification. How much time is your organization spending classifying the data that you have and making certain that the new data that's being introduced to your organization is being categorized and being classified the same way. So the steps that it can consider is it can, it can automatically identify data categories, assign classification labels, adapt to evolving data types and those types of things. Again, these are all things to consider when we're using technologies to automate classification of data within the organization. Automating documentation generation. We know that generating documentation is one of the favorite things of people to do. No, of course I'm kidding. People don't like generating documentation. Just look at the data that you have in the systems within your organization presently and look at the level of documentation that's provided. If we can use large language models to automate the, the generation of documentation, that's gonna save people time. That's gonna save steps. It's going to follow the same method to generate that comprehensive documentation that you're looking for within your, your systems. And you can apply this to legacy systems, but you certainly can apply this to the new systems that you're building as well. So again, some of the steps to consider is generating comprehensive documentation automatically, customizing templates, for future documents and things that you that your program and that your organization will need to be collecting, ensuring consistency and accuracy. Again, these are just ideas as to how we can use these technologies at the behest of our, of our data governance programs. And certainly generating data documentation, because we all know metadata management is a huge part of data governance but we're severely in many organizations lacking detailed documentation, especially from our legacy systems. Here's another way that technologies can automate activities associated with data governance, policy implementation and enforcement. So use AI to translate policies into actionable roles, you know, based on the data systems that you have within your organization. So automatically implement policies across systems, monitor and enforce policies consistently. Again, technology being used to make some of our life easier in terms of how we are uh, implementing our data governance programs within our organizations. So policy implementation enforcement is important to many organizations as they're passing directives, they're passing standards, they're passing policies but they seem to be having trouble making these things actionable within the organization. Use things like AI and generative AI to help to generate ideas as to ways that you can translate your, your policies into actionable items within your organization. Policy adaption, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, rules and regulations aren't stagnant. So we as organizations, we need to be keeping our eyes on the changing data and the changing, uh, the changing regulations. Is it's not an excuse to say that we didn't know what the change to the regulation was, but can we use AI to adjust these, these protocols, these um, policies and these regulations, uh, these controls that we have on our data? Can we use real-time data uh, for policy adjustments? Can we automate policy ups updates as well? Again, just some ideas as to how you can use technologies to automate data classification within your organization. Enhancing your data security posture, again, highlighting how 
you can use AI to strengthen policy enforcement and to protect against data breaches within your organization. And again, here are just some steps that you might want to consider as you start moving your program forward and start incorporating the use of generative AI and large language models to shape data governance. So I just want to go back real quickly to what I talked about at the beginning of the webinar, which is some of these things may be futuristic for your organization. But don't be surprised if at some point, as the data governance practitioner within your organization, somebody's going to come to you and ask you, how are these things going to impact data, impact data governance, imp impact the program that we have? It would be great for you to be able to refer back to this list or some list that you have and say, these are the technologies that we can use. These are the potential for use of generative AI and large language models to move our data governance programs forward. So the next item I wanna to talk to you about today is just some strategies for integrating these technologies into your data governance frameworks. So I don't know if you have data governance frameworks, I'm gonna share mine here in a minute, but we need to have a strategy. If we have a governance framework, if we have a data strategy, we need to find ways to be able to integrate these tools at some point, somebody's gonna to come to you and ask you your thoughts as to how should we integrate these tools into our data governance framework, into our strategy. And just real quickly, I wanna share with you, and you might've seen this before, if you've attended these webinars before, um, what my data governance framework looks like. And think about it in terms of, of those core components across the top of the framework. I listed those before. You can add to those, you can delete from those, you can make those your own within your organization, just like down the left-hand side where I have the executive level down to the support level. Again, making this, customizing this or filling this in for your organization makes sense in terms of generating a framework for data governance in your organization. But think of it in terms of if you know what goes into those empty bridges between the components on the top and the levels down the left-hand side, if you can document, for example, what data is important to the executives, what's the role of the operational level, how do we communicate with our strategic level, and so on and so forth. There's how many? 30 bridges in this framework. If we have that information and we can store that information into a data governance framework, again, it becomes data that we can feed into our large language models and we can use generative AI to start asking questions about those things. Again, didn't wanna make this webinar about the data governance framework, but if you can collect that information and you can feed it to a tool that you can then ask questions against, that's the whole concept of generative AI. That's the whole concept of the large language models, except in this case, the large language models are using data that you're, uh, that you, that, that, is, that you built for your organization. And I just took a quick note, look at the, at the webinar chat, and it says that the framework that I built or that I had developed looks like the Zachman framework. It does look like the Zachman framework. It was built on the same core concept of the Zachman framework. And in fact, I had the opportunity to share it with John. He always says that at some point in time, you're gonna wanna know everything in every one of those blocks of his framework, I'll tell you the same thing about my framework. You're going to need to know what data is important to who. You're going to need to know what processes they get involved in, what their role is, how we're measuring success in their eyes. All right, so let's continue on. Let's talk about the strategies for integrating these tools into your data governance framework. And the first one is just establishing AI-enabled policy management. And here again are just some ideas as to things that you can do with AI and in using AI and incorporating it into your, your governance framework and your governance strategy. You can use it for automated policy adaption. You can use it for generating policy and updating processes that are driven you know, by AI within your organization. You can use it to help drive um, customer or stakeholder or customer engagement. You know, oftentimes with organizations, um, we throw these tools at them, but we need to understand the human element and the human impact. And we need to engage stakeholders and train stakeholders on how to use these types of technologies within their organization. 
Another strategy for integrating these tools into the framework is to leverage AI for regulatory compliance. That is a no brainer. That for most organizations is not something that you're being asked to do. It's being told that you must comply. So are there ways that we can leverage AI and leverage generative AI and large language models to help us to monitor the changes that are taking place in the regulations and somehow automatically adjust or at least be able to indicate to us which of our governance practices or policies need to be updated? according to those changes. And just to further that, that topic, you know, continuous regulatory monitoring, contextual understanding and application of these tools. And again, I've highlighted in blue on these slides, you know, where we can, where we can invoke the strategies for integrating these tools into the framework for continuous scanning and an analyzing of regulatory updates especially if you're a global organization and you're worried about the regulatory updates are internationally. Understanding the context and the implication of these changes, you know, assessing the potential risks associated with not complying to some of these changes to the compliance rules that we're being asked to enforce within our organization. Enhancing data quality with AI. Um, again, e each of these could kind of line up with one of the columns of the framework that I mentioned to you earlier. Many organizations are still starting their data governance programs, focusing on enhancing data quality through their programs. So again, just wanted to share with you again, quickly some ideas around some strategies that you could include for integrating these tools into your data governance framework. Automated error detection and correction. I'm a little bit concerned about the correction part because I'm not certain that we're at a point where we can trust the artificial intelligence to make changes to data without them being validated by somebody, uh, without being validated by a human. So it may be just augmented intelligence instead of artificial intelligence for the correction of data errors. Real-time data validation, data standardization, and using AI. Again, these are ways of enhancing data quality with AI that you could incorporate into your strategies for incorporating these tools into your data governance framework within your organization. Automating data stewardship tasks. Well, I mean, one of the things that, that I know that an organization is trying to do is it's trying to take their project plans and the pro what sits behind the project plans, it's data. So being able to feed their project plans into a large language model to be able to speculate or to, um, to, to identify where there's going to be a need for data stewards within the project plan. Again, we're using data that's already readily available to us, and we're using tools that are now just starting to help us to shape future ways of using data governance. We're automating these tasks that are normally tasks that are gonna take time from individuals. So like I said, the, the task automation and efficiency, you know, identifying the routine and the repetitive tasks that stewards are doing, I know organizations these days are having a hard time recognizing who their stewards are and engaging them in process. Well, maybe we can use, you know, we can automate, you know, identifying what those tasks are that we need the stewards to be involved in. Enhanced decision support, quality control. I know I'm flying through a bunch of these, but like I said, one of the things I enjoyed about putting together this webinar was giving me the opportunity to do some research into ways that we can we can use these tools, the generative AI and the LLMs to shape data governance moving forward within our organizations. Implementing AI data-driven security protocols. Again, these are just ideas for how we can incorporate generative AI into our in large language models, into how we are shaping our, our data governance programs, especially moving forward because some of these technologies may be new to your organizations. I've got a couple sections that I'm going to need to go through relatively quickly because I do want, or one section just to go through quickly um, before I get to the, the case studies. And I do want to, sh want to share the case studies with you. But again, please feel free to consider this deck as a resource to you to go back to or listen to the recording again um, as ways that you can consider how generative AI and LLMs are going to shape your data governance program. 
So let's spend a little bit of time talking about the challenges and the considerations for implementing some AI level driven data governance solutions within our organization. So I've kind of highlighted whether I consider this a challenge or a consideration for your organization. But the more I thought about it, not a, the, the considerations are also challenges and things that we should be considering when we're looking to use these tools to help to shape data governance moving forward. So the first one um, is a, a consideration is your data privacy and security concerns. I shared with you a bunch of information about ways that we can potentially use generative AI and large language models to help to address our data privacy and our security concerns. We can use them to implement robust encryption and anon anonymization techniques. Say that one five times fast. But that, again, that's a way, that's a consideration as we're starting to use these tools to help to further enable our data governance programs, enhancing monitoring and real-time anomaly detection. Instead of people needing to see the errors or running a program every week or every couple days on your data, maybe doing this in real time, recognizing anomalies in your data as they're happening instead of always being reactive in addressing the data privacy and security concerns. Another, and this is definitely a challenge, is people talk about the challenge of bias and fairness in the AI models. Well, we, we need to have bias and we, we're, we, I'm sorry, we need to have fairness in our AI models and some of the ways that we can do that is we can use these tools to provide comprehensive data auditing and cleansing. We can use these tools as iterative model training with along with human insight to help to address some of the issues that we're having with implementing our data governance solutions in the AI age. Integrating with existing systems. I haven't seen too many organizations that have yet taken their generative AI tools, their large language models, and tried to incorporate them with existing systems. So developing the APIs to exchange data back and forth is something that's going to be a challenge for many organizations. Also considering that we can't, with the, the realm of possibility for AI and large language models being so large, we're gonna to need to take a gradual approach to how we're introducing these tools within our environment and within our organization. So use it. So the integration with existing systems is certainly going to be a challenge, but we want to consider the fact that we, we're not going to try to take the Big Bang Theory and do this all at once. There's going to be a gradual layered implementation of the use of these tools to help shape data governance. Scalability and cost implications. Um, again, these are all things that are going to be things that you should be thinking about as you're starting to integrate and use generative AI and large language models to shape data governance. Regulatory and ethical compliance, again, using, again, it's a challenge to navigate the, the regulatory landscape because it's forever changing. There's forever new regulatory rules, compliance rules, ethical rules that are being, rules that are being developed and are being forced upon our organizations. But not only that, organizations themselves are, are focusing on the ethical compliance and the ethical use of data within their organizations. So using, using AI and generative AI to help you to navigate that landscape is really important. What are some of the ways you can do that through continuous regulatory monitoring and, adapt, and adapt, adaptation and through ethical audits and frameworks of your organizations. Again, just describing some quick steps that you could take as your organization while you're focusing on the challenges and the considerations. And the last thing that I wanna talk about um, is I wanna just share with you some examples of how organizations have started to apply generative AI and AI to things that are going on with their organizations. So we're going to focus on, uh, on data class classification example, regulatory compliance, data quality, policy. Let's just go through these quickly and then see if there's any questions for today. So the first case study is one on, on data classification. And I've talked about organizations that have had um, significant volumes of data within their organization. And in order to classify that data effectively is a huge time 
time suck. It's 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 using up more of their time, especially as the data needs and the data usage within the organization is constantly evolving. So the impetus for this use case it was this was a financial ser uh, services organization that had large volumes of data. They wanted to be able to classify the data appropriately and act appropriately. So I'm providing the business value that was provided and how the, the business value was measured in that organization. Again, please refer back to this and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have um, even after the webinar, if that's the case. Another study is the impact of AI on regulatory compliance. I mentioned many times throughout the webinar that the regulatory landscape is changing. And here's just an example of what was the reason for the use case, what was the business value provided, and how the business value was measured for an organization that was looking to use these tools to streamline their adherence to data protection laws, not only locally or globally or, or, in, or nationally, but on an international basis. Another example of, and I know a lot of you are already talking about using these tools to help to automate data quality management. Just again, an example, and I know that there's a lot of healthcare organizations that are focusing on improving the quality of the data. Actually, there's a lot of organizations in every industry that are focusing on the improvement of quality. How can we use these tools that are now available to us that weren't available to us in the past to help us to make movement forward in automating data quality within our organization? Again, sharing the impetus for the use case, the business value provided, and how business value is measured. And I think we've got a couple more of these. Um, this this uh, use case, again, is now focused on policy enforcement. I'm working with several organizations that are defining policies as we speak. And the next step is, well, how do we get those policies out in front of everybody that's going to be impacted? How do we know if the policies are having impact how do we make certain that people within the organization are following the policies, are following the standards, are following the guidelines that are being defined? Because otherwise, it seems like a waste of time. If, if we don't have the ability to get people to use the things that we're developing, what are we creating them for? They become shelfware. So again, the impetus for, the, for this use case, um, again, wanting to monitor the effectiveness of policies across the organization. This one came from the retail space. Also talk about the business value that was provided and, and how they went about measuring the success of using these types of tools to drive AI policy or drive policy enforcement using AI. And then um, the next to last one, actually, I think it's this last use case is using AI to help to assist in the uh, in improving our ability to manage risk within the organization. So in this use case, it's just an example of how an organization, a financial institution, used AI technologies to not only to predict what their data risks were, but to help them to mitigate those risks. And again, I, I just outlined it with the impetus for the use case, the business value, and how the, the value was measured. I'm guessing I had way too much content to try to go through this in significant detail in this webinar, but I hope this was really helpful to you. Just real quickly to summarize the things that I've talked about uh, in these last 45 minutes, um, the potential, of, uh, what's the potential of using these tools to shape our programs moving forward? What are the technologies that we can use to automate some of the tasks that seem to take a lot of time and, and make use of the technologies that are available to us to do those things? talk about the strategies for integrating these things into a data governance framework. And I shared with you my framework. Again, keep in mind, if you document all of that information within a framework like that, and you feed it to a large language model, you can use generative AI to answer some questions based on what's been documented according to your data governance program. I talked about the challenges and the considerations. And last but least, I very quickly just wanted to highlight for you what some of the case studies are that show the impacts of the of the use of these technologies on data governance. With that, Shannon, I'm going to turn it back to you and see if anybody has any questions about what I talked about today. <laughs> Lots of great questions coming in and just answer the most commonly asked questions. Just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. So diving in here, Bob, you know, 
what is the relationship between AI governance and data governance in any <laughs> given enterprise? That's a great question. What is the difference is. between AI yeah. governance and AI data governance? Um, a lot of people will say that there is no such thing as AI data governance. There's just data governance that's applied to artificial intelligence. So I just want to put that out there at the beginning. So there's not master data. I've written articles about this, that there's there are there's really only one data governance. And you can put big data governance, master data governance, customer data governance. We don't really need to call it AI data governance. So that is that is a discipline in itself. The data governance is, is a discipline within itself within itself. But then the same thing holds true for AI governance, because AI governance really is a higher level than AI data governance. AI governance has to do with everything of you know ethical use uh, of data within your organization. It has to do with um, just the whole governance of everything that's related to implementing and moving forward with using things like artificial intelligence within an organization. So if you're friends with me on LinkedIn, you can look for an article that just recently I published that talked about the difference between AI governance and AI data governance. And I, I got a lot of pushback or some comments from people that there is no such thing as AI data governance, which is the reason why I also added a link to the fact that there's really only one data governance that can be applied to AI. All right. So Bob, if there are so many um, artificial intelligence and large language model tools out there, how do you determine whether to purchase a, or tool, purchase a tool or build your own LLM or a combination of the two? Where do you start? Well, I think there may be some restrictions that are placed within your organization as to what data you can incorporate into a into an, a, uh, an LLM that is just generally available. Um, organizations are really just at the very early stages of creating their own large language models. Um, so I would say, you know, at this point, that's what's really stopping organizations from just using the generally available AI tools. Um, is that there's some restriction on what data can be shared with them, and therefore it, it also restricts or, or limits the, the effectiveness of it for your organization. So again, I don't know if I answered your question really well, but the um, you know consider what it takes to generate a large language model within your organization. Consider that once you've entered the data into those large language models, that that data needs to be protected and it needs to be secured as well. But I would say that's the biggest thing that's stopping organizations from just using generally available ones is the, restric the restrictions on how they can use their own data within those tools. Perfect. And we've got about eight minutes left. Lots of time for more questions here. So, Bob, if AI is going to be used to monitor compliance adherence, should the AI engine be on-prem then to ensure security of data? Huh. I, you know, I, I hate to claim that I'm an expert in this field. I think that's more of a technology-based question. Um, should it be on-prem or should it not be on-prem? I would think that the same concerns about the protection of the data is going to apply to, to large language models as it applies to other systems and whether they're held on-prem or not. So I don't have a, a good answer to the question. I'm guessing, again, I, I really don't have enough information to be able to answer whether or not these large language models are being stored on-prem or they could be somewhere in the cloud. Perfect. So when when does data governance and, and AI governance begin? Are they the same thing? We've kind of talked about this a little bit. You talked about this in the first question, you know, but um, do they yeah, work together? Yeah, yeah they're, they're not the same thing. I mean, one is data governance. Where one really focuses on the data that's going to be used within AI. And then the other focuses on just the use of AI in general within your organization. So they're not the same thing. But yeah, we did talk about it before.
Yeah. Um. And do they both live in the data governance office? Oh, wow. I, I, I wish there was an easy answer to that. I don't know where these questions are coming from. They're great questions. Um, there's no easy answer to that. I would think that AI data governance, if you're calling that calling it that, that that would exist within your data governance office, within under the uh, purview of potentially your chief data or chief data and analytics officer. AI governance in general, I would think it would be more of, it would be more focused on risk management um, for the organization. So I would say that would not fall under the purview of data governance. But again, I'd be curious to hear from people as to, you know, how does it work within your organization? Or have you even addressed this within your organization yet? Thank you. So you're right. So many great questions here. Uh, so Bob, can LLMs be outdated? If they are trained with data that is in the from the past, will it give us information based on old data? That's a great question too. Wow. Um, so let's just use, for example, chat GPT, because that's a generally available large language model that you can use generative AI against. If you ask it certain questions or at least certain versions of that tool, certain questions, it will very quickly tell you that all of its data came before November of 2022. Remember, I, I mentioned earlier that that's when ChatGPT was introduced. I think some of the more recent versions of ChatGPT have incorporated fresher data. Yes, there is a, a potential that the data within your LLM will go stale. So there has to be, as things change, again, when I talked about the integration with different systems in your organization, as things change, you're going to need to continually up to date. There needs to be change management associated with your LLM, just like there would be around any application in your organization. All right, we've got about four minutes left, so let me keep let's see if I can get at least two more questions in here. So um, what are different Gen AI and LM tools to be implemented with in data governance practice? What are different tools to be used? Yeah, with data, uh, you with know, data I'm governance. Not, yeah. I'm not really aware of vendors that provide these tools, but I think you could find them relatively easily by doing a search on the internet. Remember the remember the internet? It's what we used before large language models came around. There are certainly vendors that are focusing on those types of things. Okay, what, what was the question again? Yeah, well, I mean, sure. I, but, you know, what are different Gen, Gen AI and LM, LLM tools to be implemented within data governance? Um, what are the new gen? So I don't know. Again, if they're talking about things like Chat GPT, but anything that can generate well, content. Yeah, I think that the way I read that is, and 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 correct me if I'm wrong. That you know, is are there tools? Is there gen tools out there to help manage to help with data governance? Right? Are there AI tools? I don't know if there are any as of now, but see now you now you just exactly understood <clears throat> why I had a hard time answering the question. Um, the I hope that you can go back to some of the slides that I provided in the webinar and say how can we use generally available LLM tools to to manage some of those tasks. So are there specifically, if people know of specifically tools that you can use within these products, please share them in the chat. Um, we'll certainly share those with everybody. Um, but I, again, just trying to give you ideas as to how to use the tools that are available instead of kind of creating new data governance specific tools to do some of the tasks we talked about. Sure, indeed. And I know a lot of companies are adding uh, AI to their products just Everybody. built right in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it is getting built in for sure. So um okay, uh, well uh oh there's so many great questions, but I'm afraid we have less than a minute. So I'm not I don't know send if that we're gonna be able to huh send them on. I will I'm, I'm uh, yeah I will send them over. <laughs> yeah so if you have any questions feel free to type it type it in. I will get these questions over to Bob um and we'll 
get the answers in the follow-up email that I'll send to everybody by end of day Monday with links to the slides, links to the recording, um, as well as the answers to the outstanding questions. Great questions, great topic, such a new and exciting area. So Bob, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. This was a great, another great topic as we usually talk about. So thank everybody for, thank you everybody for your interest. Thanks, y'all. I hope y'all have a great day.